Hello again everyone and welcome back to Linode. When you set up your own Linode instance, there's all kinds of different things that you can do with it. You can set up a web server, you could run a Nextcloud instance, WordPress, I mean the sky's the limit. Now another cool thing that you can do is actually set up a cloud desktop. I mean think about it, you can have your very own desktop in the cloud where you can use things like LibreOffice, maybe open up a web browser, things like that. How cool would that be? Well, that's actually exactly what we're going to do in today's video. We are going to set up our very own cloud desktop. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's get right into it. So what I'm going to do right now is create a brand new Linode for this project and it's going to run Ubuntu. So what I'll do is go ahead and create a Linode and then choose the distribution. I'll scroll all the way down here until I find Ubuntu 2004 and there it is. Now for the region, what I'm going to do is choose the region that is closest to me. And I believe it's this one, but I think it's close enough. So I'll choose Toronto. And here as normal, we choose our Linode plan. And you want to pay special attention to this because again, we are going to be using this for the purposes of setting up a desktop in the cloud. And we want to make sure that we have enough resources depending on what we intend to run on this instance. Now, normally I choose the Nanode because that's the lowest cost plan that you can get. And that's great as long as my intended workload fits within the specs that this provides. So when we start thinking about desktop apps, what comes to mind for me immediately is running a desktop environment as well as a web browser. And when I start thinking about those things, then all of a sudden one gigabyte of RAM doesn't seem like enough to me. So I would actually recommend going with a higher plan to suit this purpose. For me, I'm going to go to the four gigabyte plan right here. And I think that's going to be more than enough for running a desktop environment and a web browser with a handful of tabs. So that's the one that I'm going to go with. And also it gives us 80 gigabytes of storage, which is pretty cool. So we definitely have enough room for the things that we might download. So I'll scroll down. And for the label, I'm just going to call it Ubuntu Desktop. And then I'll put in a root password. I'll scroll down a bit here. And optionally, we can enable backups for an additional $5 per month. So if this desktop in the cloud is going to be mission critical and have very important things going on inside it, then I highly recommend you give that a consideration. But for me, I'll just click create as it is. I think that's good enough. And then I'll just give this a few moments to provision and we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so we should be good to go. And just to make sure, I'll launch the console, see if it's finished booting. And it has. So we can actually log into the Linode and go ahead and get it configured. Now what I'm going to do actually is use SSH. So I'll close this and I'll copy the IP address here. And then we'll log in via SSH. So I'll type SSH and then the user is root and then the IP address, I'll paste it right here. I'll say yes. Now type in the password and then enter. Now before we go ahead and convert this into a desktop in the cloud, what I recommend that we do is get it updated and then create a user account for ourselves so that way we are not running as root. So to install the updates, I will run apt update. And there we see that we have 43 packages that can be upgraded. So to install those, I'll run apt dist upgrade and enter. All right, so all the updates are now installed. So next, what we'll need to do is install some packages that will provide us with a desktop environment, basically our graphical user interface. And what I recommend is to install the Mate desktop. So to do that, what we're going to do is run apt install Ubuntu Mate desktop. And normally when you run the desktop version of Ubuntu, you actually are using a customized GNOME desktop environment. But when it comes to Ubuntu 2004, 
GNOME does not appear to be working as of the time I'm recording this video within a VNC session. But the Mate desktop environment is actually going to run much faster anyway and use fewer resources on your Linode. So overall, it's probably a better way to go. So anyway, I'll press enter to install this package. And that's going to lead to the installation of many more packages because the Ubuntu Mate desktop package does have a lot of prerequisites that we have to install as well. So what I'll do is press enter to start the process and I'll let this finish and I'll be right back. And there we go. Now we have the required packages installed for the desktop environment. So next we'll need to install the package for VNC. We will be using the VNC server for facilitating our actual connection to the desktop environment. And to do that, we will run apt install and then tight VNC server just like that. And there you go. That was simple enough. So next I recommend that you create a user account for yourself so that way you aren't using root when you connect to the desktop environment. And for that we will type add user and then the username that you want to create. So I'll just use my first name, keep it simple. And it's going to ask us to set a password so I'll type mine in right here. And then again. And then for these prompts I'm just going to press enter for each to bypass those. And now we should have our user account. So the user has been created. Next, what we're going to want to do is make the new user account a member of the sudo group, which will allow that user to basically execute administrative commands. So for that, we can run user mod dash lowercase a uppercase g, the group that we want to add our user to. So in the case of Ubuntu, that will be a group by the name of sudo and then the user that we've just created, which in my case was J, I'll press enter. And now to test that user, we can switch to the user. So I'll just type SU hyphen J, just like that. And then we can test that sudo works as well by just running some kind of command. So I'll just run sudo apt update. Type in the password. So now what I'm going to do is reboot the Linode. I recommend you do the same. During the process, we did update all of our packages and we should reboot our Linode to take advantage of those new patches. So what I'll do is go up here to the Linode dashboard where it says running in the upper right hand corner and click on reboot. Then I'll give this a moment to finish and once it comes back up, we'll go ahead and continue. And it looks like it's starting up. And now it's fully started. And now that it's started, we can go ahead and install the client that we will need in order to connect to the server via VNC. So to do that, I will open a new tab. And what I did is I just pasted the URL to the client in the address bar. And this is the real VNC client. And this is for those of you that are running something like Windows or Mac OS. Actually, as you can see here, quite a few different operating systems are supported by this client. Now, on my end, I'm running Linux, and I'm going to go about this a bit differently. I'm going to use an app called Remina to facilitate the connection. But if you are using any of the other operating systems here, then feel free to download the VNC viewer, get that installed, and then we'll go ahead and get that running. Now on my end, what I'm going to do is run sudo apt install remina. And this is for those of you that are running a desktop flavor of Linux on your laptop or desktop that is based on Debian or Ubuntu. If you are running a different distribution, you may have to adjust this command accordingly. For example, with Fedora, you have DNF instead of apt. But I'll press enter on my end to go ahead and install this package. I'll type in my super secret password. So anyway, that is all set. And what we can do is we can now SSH into the Linode. 
And here's the command that I will use. I'm going to use my username and then the IP address of the Linode. I'll press enter. So next what we're gonna do is start the VNC server to test it and make sure that it works. So to do that, we'll simply run VNC server space and then colon one, just like that. I'll press enter. And since this is the very first time that I've ever launched the VNC server on this Linode, it wants me to create a password to protect the desktop. So I'll set that here. And just to note, this is limited to eight characters. It will truncate the password if you type a password longer than that. Then I'll type it in again. And now it's asking me if I would like to set a view only password. I'll say no to that. So now VNC is running in the background, but we're not ready to connect to it just yet. So what I'm going to do is actually stop the process. And for that, I will run VNC server dash kill, then colon one. And now VNC server is no longer running. We need to basically add some additional configuration before we can run it. So now that we have run VNC server for the first time, on my Linode, I do have a .vnc directory now. So if I go inside that directory, we can see that I have an X startup script right here. We're going to create a new one. So what I'll do is move that to a different name so that VNC server cannot find it. I'll just add .bak to the end, simple enough. And then I can use a text editor such as nano to create a new version of that file. And here it is. Then I'll type the very first line here. This is a bash script that I'm creating right here. And then I'll paste in the command that you see on the screen. So essentially what we're doing is we are creating a script that will run as soon as our VNC server launches. And it's going to create a brand new session of the Mate desktop. And the ampersand symbol will background that. And that's going to be what we'll end up connecting to. So so if you hold control and press O, brings up the save dialog, I'll press enter, and then control X exits out. And then what we wanna do is make that new script executable. So now that we have the X startup script, we can move on to the next step. So I'll just disconnect from the Linode. And now I am on my local Linux laptop. And what we're going to do now is set up an SSH tunnel that'll secure our connection. And that's what we'll use to get to the Linode that'll allow us to connect to the desktop session. So the command is a little long, so I'm going to paste it in. And here it is. Now essentially what we're doing is we are creating an SSH session to the Linode, and we're going to attach it to a local host port of 5901. So what that will do is allow us to use localhost and then that port to connect to the Linode. So at the end, you see the normal username and then the IP address of the Linode. So that's going to be the ultimate destination, but we're essentially creating an SSH tunnel for this. So I'll press enter and type in the password. Now it may look like any other SSH connection and it kind of is, but again, we're creating an SSH tunnel that's running in the background on our local computer. So now that we have the connection established, we can use Remina to actually connect to the desktop and use it. So now that we have the connection set up and we are currently on the prompt for the Linode, we should go ahead and start the VNC server. So again, that's VNC server, colon one, I'll press enter. And now that we have that running, we can open up Remina, which is right here in my case. I'll create a brand new connection profile. It's the icon on the upper left right here. For the name, I'll just call it Linode. For the protocol, I will change that to the Remina VNC plugin. And then for the server, I'll type localhost, colon one, just like that. And then we can set the color depth and the quality. So as you can see here, we have poor fastest as the default. The higher you set this, the better the quality. If you have a really good internet connection, then you could probably crank this right up. But if you don't, you might want to be reasonable about how you set this. I'm going to choose good. 
I have a decent internet connection, so I think that should be fine. And then for the color depth, you might want to up that to high color if your internet connection is fast enough. But I'll let you play around with those settings. If you do connect and you find it slow and just unresponsive, then just basically dial these settings down a bit. I'll click Save. And now we have the new connection profile right here. So now I'll double click on it. I'll type in my VNC password. And then optionally, you can save the password if you'd like. I'll go ahead and do it and then click OK. And as you can see here, we actually have a Mate desktop environment. Let's see if I can get the screen centered here that we can now use for, well, pretty much anything. I can open up Firefox, for example. Then I could simply browse the internet, go to any website I'd like. And as you can see here, we now have a desktop running in the cloud that we can access from anywhere we have an internet connection. And you can do all sorts of things with this. You could browse the internet, you can set up a remote development environment, you name it, use your imagination, the sky's the limit. So there you go. At this point, you should have your very own cloud desktop, and that's awesome. And you know, that's just one example of many that you can use a Linode for. So I'll leave it up to you to think of even more awesome things that you could do with your Linode. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you click on that subscribe button, and we'll see you again real soon. Thanks for watching.